Greetings. Today, I want to start a very controversial but clear message on the Holy Ghost baptism. So you listen up, you apostolics, your holiness, your Pentecostal, all those who believe that you have to speak in tongues or be baptized by the Holy Ghost. Let us go to the scriptures and discern what the scriptures say about Holy Ghost baptism. Now, the Holy Ghost baptism, I'm going to state what the Bible says from the beginning. The Holy Ghost baptism was just on two occasions in the Bible. On the day of Pentecost and the house of Cornelius. See, the promise was only to the two, the church. Jew and Gentile, and both of them had to get it the same way. Now I'm going to go to the scriptures. So there will be not no, so there won't be any argument. So all you apostolic fakers, E.W. Tooks, Gino Jennings, Tony Smith, Rafa Gabash Luke, Omega Shelton, and all you other false prophets out there that followed after the lie that Sherrod Johnson told, listen up. And if you have a problem with it, 221, 215-224-7999. We're open for a debate. 320 West Chew Avenue, Philadelphia, PA. Now, let's start in the book of Mark. Mark 1, and let's read where the trail starts at. Where we start and where we get the word Holy Ghost baptism and where the terminology comes in, because it is a biblical term. But it's not for you. It's not for me either. It's not for the church, and it's not required for your salvation. See, many people are duped by the false teachings of the apostolic faith, and that's what the job of Satan, to get people in the church, out of the church. They steer you the wrong way. But let's go by the map. Now, in Mark 1, and I'm going to start at verse 3. Let's read. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now this is the prophecy of Isaiah, of the one coming, the forerunner, John the Baptist. Let's read on. John did baptize in the wilderness, among the laws. John baptized. Well, why did John baptize? And preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. John baptized for repentance, for the remission of sins. But John said, I'm not the one. There's one after me whose shoes that I'm not able to latch. That's the one that you follow. He was there to announce the coming of the Messiah according to the scriptures. Let's read on. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the, in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. All John's disciples, the followers of John, were baptized. Okay? For all you fighting water baptism, they were baptized in water, submerged. This is the baptizo, if you want to go back to the Greek, so some of you are strapped up in the Greek. Not a baptismo. Okay, not a washing, not a ceremony washing. This is an immersion. Baptizo. Zo. Let's read on. John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey. And priests saying, There will come one mightier than I after me that latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. Verse 8. I indeed baptize you with water. John baptized with water. This was the light fitter. Now let's read and read carefully. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now who was he talking to? I will baptize he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The disciples of John later, that later became apostles, 
That's who will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. See? Not you. Read the context of it. John was talking to his disciples about the coming of a Messiah. And John said, look, I baptize you with water. You're my disciple. But look, I'm not the one. When that one comes, he's going to baptize you, not the world, with the Holy Ghost. And let's read on. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. So Jesus was baptized in the water according to the scriptures. Why? He had no sin, but he was establishing the pattern which he was going to build his church upon, upon the confession and then the obedience of all his disciples. See? So let's go over. So we see here in verse 8, a holy, the Holy Ghost baptism is promised to the disciples. See? That wasn't the baptism for salvation. But we'll see why he was to baptize those individuals with the Holy Ghost baptism versus the baptism of the water baptism for the remission of sins. So I want to go over real quick to Ephesians 4 and 4. And we're going to link all this in together. This is New Testament. Mark is Old Testament. See, this is before, this is, Ephesians is after Jesus uh, made the sacrifice and the church came in. Mark is before. So you have to under, be able to rightly divide the scriptures. Let's go into Ephesians 4 and 4 and let's read something for clarity because there's a Holy Ghost baptism and there's a water baptism. So your question is, which one is correct and which is the one cor correct baptism that we should have? All right. Well, let's see if, or, or can there be more than one baptism? Or some would say, well, then you don't have to be baptized. Well, let's clear it all up. In Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 4. There is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called, this is the church, are called into one hope, one belief of your calling. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So there is one baptism, one faith, one door. One people, one God, one Lord, one gate. There has to be only one baptism. So we have to find out which baptism is the correct one. Is it the Holy Ghost baptism or it is the submersion baptism under for the remission of sin? Let's go in the scripture and let's find out. Let's go back into the Old Testament, but let's read the directions that Jesus Christ gave to his disciples. See, his, upon his Ascension, he gave instructions to those same ones that John was talking about that those individuals would baptize with the Holy Ghost. He gave in Jesus, the Messiah, gave them instruction. Red writing. Let's read the red writing and see what Jesus said. Mark, go back to Mark 16. And I believe I'm going to start at 15. We're going to write and divide the scriptures and we're going to walk through the scriptures and see. Most of the individuals that are confused on these points, all you have to do is read the Bible, and all you have to do is put Scripture with Scripture. And you have to rightly divide it in this context. I can't just say, go over here and get this, and go over and slap it all together and try to make it stick. i got to make biblical sense out of it. It's got to be consistent, and you can't be able to contradict it. Now, if you think you can contradict it, 215. 224-7999-320 West 2 Avenue, and you have an open invitation to call, write, or even get us on the internet. www.churchofchrist-pa.org Come on. Come on down. 320 West 2 Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, I'm, I call for Mark 16, and I think I want to start at 15. Yes. And he said unto them, Who's the them? Those same them who now are the they that are the apostles of Jesus Christ. Apostles meant sent, or those sent directly by God. These were the individuals chosen by God to represent or to be the eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ when he begins 
the church in Jerusalem. These are the same ones right here. Now here's the directions to them. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, we know from the scripture that the, the scripture had to go to the Jew first and then to the rest of the nation. Gentile just means other nation. Gentile don't mean white man or this. Gentile means other nations outside the commonwealth of Israel. So we know it had to start first in Jerusalem. We're going to go over that. It had to start first in Jerusalem. But Jesus said go into all the world and preach the gospel, not just among the Jews. This is very important because there has to be a way of communicating the message to the world because these individuals weren't taught all the languages in the world. Okay? This is a clue onto what kind of baptism that you should get and why that baptism on Pentecost happened the way it did. Now come on. Go into all the, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So, we got the formula right there. It starts at belief and it ends with baptism. This is the key for salvation. Now, there's some obedience that has to go in there. Okay? He st Jesus started from the beginning because he had preached them the gospel. He had told them how to, how to win souls. He told them how to evangelize. He told them how to be fishers of men. He taught them that. So he said, look, you preach the message of me. I'm going to be ascended. I'm going to wait. I'm going to send the comfort. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost to you to guide you into all truth. I'm going to send you out to preach the gospel to the world. And this message is going to be out to every man and woman and child. So it's going to begin with the belief in me. And the act of obedience ends with your baptism that brings you into the body. Okay? You have to continue there on. But to get you into the body, it's going to start with your belief and it's going to end with your baptism. Now, he said baptism. So for all you say you don't have to be baptized, Jesus said you had to be baptized. So who are you, Reverend McGillicuddy, to get up there and say, oh, well, you don't have to be baptized. That's just an outward sign of an inward grace. That's an outward lie told by an outward or inward and outward liar. Because you can't find that in the Bible. That's a lie started by Billy Graham and all the other false prophets that you see on the radio. That's a lie. You have to be baptized. Why? Jesus told you to be baptized. Look, don't believe me. Don't believe any of the brothers in the church of Christ. Believe Jesus. Now, what did Jesus say? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, who do you believe? Your false prophet or do you believe Jesus? Call Jesus a liar. And if you call Jesus a liar, you ought to go to hell because you're hell bound. He gave you the words and he told you what to do. Who are you to say that you don't have to do it? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And don't go into, why did they say, well, he is not baptized? Well, if you don't believe, it has to begin with begin believing. And it's a conjunction. You have to believe and be baptized. So if you don't believe, who's going to baptize somebody who don't believe? So you have to get both parts of the formula. It's a conjunction. Just like if I said, look, in order for you to get into my building, you have to walk up the stairs and turn the key. So I don't have to say to you, well, you couldn't get in because you didn't walk up the stairs because or you couldn't get in because you didn't turn the key. I didn't have to say that because you never walked up the stairs. So in other words, if I told you, look, you got to walk up the stairs and turn the key to get in and you didn't walk up the stairs. Well, I don't have to say, well, you didn't turn the key. That's why you didn't get in. Well, you're not going to turn the key because you didn't walk up the stairs. See, you have to do both of them. You have to walk up the stairs and turn the key. Just like in salvation, you have to do both. You have to start with belief, and you have to end with baptism. See? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, that's going to bring you into the body. Your belief, your pistos, your persuasion is going to believe you in. And that's a believing faith, and a believing faith causes you to move. You go in Hebrews 11, everybody that believed moved. Abraham moved. Rahab moved. Jephthah moved. 
By faith, by fear and trembling they move. So we have here, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, so back to our question. Which baptism is the correct one? The Holy Ghost baptism? Or is it the so-called, uh, or is it the Holy Ghost baptism? Or is it the baptism of water, submission, submersion of repentance? Okay, well, let's read on. Let's go to the book of Luke. Let's go to Luke 24, and let's see the instructions, the final instructions that Jesus gave before his ascension. This is, this is his instruction again to the apostles. But this was leading in. This is just another gospel writer's account of Jesus before his ascension. This is Luke. And let's see how Dr. Luke takes it. Luke 24, and I want to start at verse 44. Luke 24 and 44. Get your Bibles out. Get your pen and pad so you can follow along. And all I'm doing is rightly dividing the scriptures and letting you make the decision for yourself. Let's see. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. He died already. He's off, he's off the cross now. And he's already resurrected. So he's telling his disciples again. These were the disciples <coughs> that followed after the pattern of John and that were baptized in the Jordan and were told that Jesus was going to baptize them with the Holy Ghost. Baptize them. All right. And look, and some of you say, well, the 120 were baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's the prophecy of Joel that was fulfilled. He's going to pour out his spirits on your sons and daughters. Wait a minute. Hold on right there. Because the 120, and I'm going to show you, Lord be willing, the 120 weren't baptized. Only the disciples were baptized. See, that's where the whole world, beside from the Church of Christ, got it wrong. The 120 did not. Received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It was just the disciples. I'm 